Philia to Tatu, Aing Aline, Tayao, Sofaman Malo, Yusul Tatu Lee. Good morning, greetings to you all in Jesus' name. Yeah, I face it Talo, Ia Ono Tatu, Aile, a few of Ia, Ale Tu Aline Tayao. You will mato a tour, mato, sang a fawau and a famine winner, low suaf a ear, low a few a pule a wow, me a umma or mato, fire, two pui, low fat a tanga mile a tour, me a foot you or mato, yile, two langa, the savalinga, mal out nanga yati oe mato, to daltonu tama, or o yayo, ow, leo leo, ma pui pui. Matu te vala au matu ina te o luma le nei taimi au matu tala ia o fionga fe tala i mai oe o matu lotu tu ina te o luma ia valea malele atua le mea fenga luenga yo au se e a ia ina ina yo matu moa le sa vali te fina ngalo ai mo i matu i lo sua fa Yesu ameni ya ya moa se Sa vali mo ita to ile neita e ao ile tusi a Ioanne lo nta apus full mal tolu John chapter thirteen ya fa pia fu i ole a ya inisiem fa i ona mai mo mai ile neia unanga ya fa talufa fa filo yatu ile swa fa manu malo i sul ta to li. John chapter 3, verse 1 to 4. 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 Verse 1 yeah, of young Alotato Wali. My children, I will be with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and just as I told the Jews, so I tell you, where I am going, you cannot come. A new command I give you love one another as I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples. If you love one another, Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus replied, where I am going, you cannot follow now, but you will follow later. Peter asked, Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Then Jesus answered, will you really lay down your life for me? Very truly, I tell you, before the rooster grows, you will disown me three times. Fautala ina se mta upu e fa ma losi e lo finangalo e le neita e au e fa pea pe a li i Jesu. If Jesus is Lord, a fa pea o le li i Jesu. A fa pea o le li i Jesu. If Jesus is Lord, well, for your knowledge. From chapter 13 through to chapter 17, all events records in these chapters happen in one night. Me umma lava letus to see a ille in capus fulma tolu se ya o ille mata opus fulma fitu. It's one conversation. Tassi lava le po to titi for lava tassi le no fuanga natupu mai mea. And I chose this part because it's one of the points that I'm going to share with you. That's why I choose this portion that I have read. But our, our message this morning will cover the whole conversation from chapter 13 to chapter 17. So I need your full attention. As I'm going to um, call out a couple of references that refers to what I'm going to talk about. If Jesus is Lord, in the context of this um, story we are looking at it now, this is the night before Jesus' crucifixion. 
au tato masa ni ai pefo nga istato sa valio tuna yatu kelo kemisa tato va va ai pelo kala ta vita sa failo natalio solomona a sa uni e, 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 e oti pefo kala paulo a failo natalio fale nga o timoteo a sa uni e oti that o meta u le lotu tangata this is the moment that jesus is about to die and we've noticed and we've learned that every everyone that is dying will say the very important thing in his life that's the time there's no fake stories there's no made up stories the truth and everything that is treasure and everything that is pressure in your heart you will say on your deathbed and that's what Jesus did here this is the very very important thing in the heart of Christ now he replied to his disciples lela wa tatu va va ai i o le fai unga le o le maf tanga yesu mauna so sa unga yesu e maliu wa fale tonu ya loto olona so le temi ato alava mele kolu il fata usanga na mafuta ai sa yai le mafan fananga sa yai le fa loto telenga ale o sa unga yesu e fa ma va e mai ai o ke fi manga te titulo fa ipula ka fa ka e fa ma like a transition to where i want to take you this morning look at chapter 13 verse 3 I'm oh, sorry um chapter 13 verse 1 still it says it was just before the passover festival jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the father and notice this having loved his own who were in the world he loved them to the end well that's enough for me ma ko i love va nga mo awia Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. Ile nganga kusi ya kuspa iya, ole la fonga lea, ose la fonga ose tala fa sol pitu. Ose la fonga ose mea moni na tupu. Ose la fonga ise mea elema faye ise mea tupu le temi nei po le luma nai po le tua nai o na suia le mea moni ua uma na tupu le mea moni faye mai kala kuspa ia having loved his own who were in the world he loved them to the end in the original language this kind of statement is called indicative statement it's a statement of of a fact it's a statement of truth it's talking about something that is already done but there's nothing we can do at the present to change so the truth is jesus loved his friends jesus loves his disciples and then he says he loved them to the end again another proclamation again another statement of truth he says he will love them till the end And if you look at how your life came about if you look at how you live your Christian life and you try to predict your future you worry so much about what's going on now you worry so much about what's going to happen in the future but let me assure you this is God this is Lord say through his word he says he will love his own to the end so no, no matter what's going to happen No matter how things seems to be in the future or the modern time it doesn't change the truth that Jesus our Lord our God will love us till the end. If Jesus is Lord how would you think of that? If Jesus is Lord well the first thing about our theme it says Jesus is Lord First thing that you know when you say Jesus is Lord first thing is you are not the Lord Afa peo Yesu ole li le memo mo ya nga ilo ele o yo se li Ele o yo se li no nga nga Yesu le li when when it says Jesus is Lord it simply means that Jesus is the only Lord and let me tell you if you know something about the the English grammar or even in the Greek grammar Every time we say Jesus is Lord it's always have the definite article they call it in English 
before the word Lord, when it says the Lord, the Lord, the Lord, grammatically it means there's no other Lord like this Lord, means it's only one Lord. So when we say Jesus is Lord, we are not Lord and no one else is Lord, only Jesus is Lord. Only Jesus is the Lord. All things have been put under Jesus' spell. Look at verse 3. We're making our way to where I want us to be this morning. <laughs> Look at verse 3 of chapter 13. It says, Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under his power. Well, we're not going to overlook these first words in this verse. It says, Jesus knew. That's why Jesus is Lord. And by the way, Jesus is not Lord because He earned it. Jesus is not Lord because we're so good. Jesus is not Lord because he, he was so holy and righteous. No, that is His nature. He was Lord. Right from the beginning till the end. He is Lord all through. Everything. All things is now being placed under Jesus' power. Le Jesus knew. Tell it to me if I Many times we, we go about in our service of Christ, but we doubt and we are not really know things for sure. But the Bible says about our Lord that He knew that all power is now placed under Him. Imagine if this one was given to one of us. Imagine if this power, like the one that was given to Jesus. Well, Yakako, our church, look for that. I was happy with that. When they say they have that power to do all sorts of miracles, raise the dead and all those things. <laughs> but when the COVID-19 hit, I was, I was still confident, knowing that, okay, this is the time these power possessors will come up and, and heal all the COVID-19 patients. I was waiting. There was no sign of any of those healers, those miracle workers. Because all things will be put under their power. They will do those things, but it wasn't the case here. To say, Malitato Faitau. Do I believe in miracles? Of course I do, but not. With the one happening around us. Not with the one that says they do perform miracles, but really they are not miracles. <laughs> What's the lesson here? It's the power to serve. It's a power to serve. It's a power to serve, not to put on a show like a Tupai Bruno show. <laughs> Thirteen four, chapter thirteen, verse four. 
I'll read again verse 3. Jesus knew that the Father had put all things under His power, and that He had come from God and was returning to God. Verse 4, So He got up from the meal, took off His outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around His waist. He's now given all the power. Well, to be honest, if that was me, this is what I would do. If I would be given the power, I would whoosh, so lightning this side, lightning this side. <laughs> Bring the mountain from the interior and place them in the ocean. Because all those, why? Because you got the power. <laughs> and guess what the Lord did? He was given all things under His power. But did, did you just read what He did? He says, so he got up from the mule, took off his outer clothing, and wrapped a towel around his waist. He was given all the power, and yet he used that power to serve. <laughs> ole, ole. No one can do what Jesus did. In other words, it's, it, it seems like it's easier to heal the sickness, it's easier to do other things than do what Je Jesus did here. If you are the Lord and you sit there in the supper, everyone will know you. Why? Because where you're sitting and what you dress. He was given the power. And how he used that power? He humbled himself and served. He was the master. He was the Lord. And yet he served his servants. What an example. The lowliest servants in any household this is what he's doing. This is what he's going to do. If guests arrive, this is what a servant, not just any servant, the lowliest servant, unless there's only one servant there, then that servant will do this feet washing thing. <laughs> and yet Jesus did it to his disciples. A couple of hours, then Jesus will leave his disciples. But he wants them to understand what kind of ministry that they are calling to. Things that people do in their churches, their service of God and what they do in whatever department in the church reflects their understanding of the ministry of Christ. Peter didn't have any idea what kind of ministry he's about to enter into. <laughs> That's why when Jesus come about, come around with the basin and the towel, and Peter say, are you going to wash my feet? Lord, <laughs> you, you'll find that in, in verse 6, 7, 8. Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus replied, you do not realize now what I am doing, but later. You will understand. That answer was not good enough for Peter. You, you notice something? He said, Lord. And then he questioned his Lord's actions. And then in verse 8, he says, No, you're not going to do that to me. I don't blame him. I don't blame Peter. Having someone that who is Lord, and yet do this kind of things, well, naturally, there's no way we can believe in that, and there's no way we can accept that, because we are human beings, we've been given the conscience to know that this is too much for us. Jesus' title was too much. He is Lord. 
And with these three or four years that he's been with his disciples, he told them he is the creator. He, before Abraham was, he was. So these guys know that Jesus is, the, is God in human flesh. And yet here, he's going to wash their feet. But the, this is the lesson Jesus was trying to teach his disciples. Peter, to be my disciple, you don't need a title. You don't come with your title. You come with a towel. Towel signifies leadership, servant, servant leadership. We're looking at the leader here. We're looking at the Lord, making an example that he's going as low as washing the feet of his disciples. Oh, so. I alluye so. It's the leader that leads by example 13, 15. I have set you an example that you should do as I have done for you, Jesus said. <laughs> Peter said, no Lord, you're not going to do that to me. And Jesus says, unless I wash you, you have no part with me. Well, this is just symbolic. And this is not a soteriological statement. This is a statement of ministry. If I do not wash you, you're not going to go and take these disciples. No wonder the Bible says, I think through Paul that says, um, before you go and carry this gospel, you need for your feet to be washed. You cannot be a part of my ministry. So before we go, we need our feet to be washed. By Christ. Peter is already saved. You are already clean. And a person who is already clean, he needs to wash just his feet. We'll see how this goes about. Jesus. What he was doing is, he was showing his disciples that this is the, and this is the first thing I want us to know when you are called to be a disciple. In other words, we are Christian, we are called to be a Christian, we are called to be his students, we are called to be his servants. <clears throat> All we need is a tower. Notice some things that Jesus did before that Samaritan action. He says, so he got up from the meal. Means he left his position. He left his seat. What else he did? Took off his outer clothing. And wrapped a towel around his waist. Really look like a servant now. Falling a why? Because you are servants. So the true, first truth I want us to know about Jesus being Lord related to us is this. We are his servants. Oh, 
ma ngai ele upu au auna ale upu au auna la fa sa moa mai ai ele upu o ngana tu se suspa ia a ko fa sa moa kili ol polonga because the actual word there is doulos sometimes they translate servants but really the word is slaves and slave simply means it's someone that has no saying in his doings his lord tell him what to do he move as the lord says and that is what we are to god one pastor once said and i like it it says the reason why we are so free because we are god's slaves and then you relate that to what paul says in um galatians 15 when he bring all the list of the fruit of the spirit after that he says against such thing there is no law I means that's where we are so free because we can love as much as we can you can never be taken to prison because you, your love is too much you can forgive as long as you want as much as you want you still have freedom to to forgive some more <laughs> that's what it means we are a slave of Christ so being a disciple or being a christian We are also his servants whether you are pastor whether you are father or mother or CEO at your company we are servants of Christ You are not lord You are not king You are not go lord or go king if that makes sense Look at the example Jesus made And by the way, Jesus is being characterized here as the Lord and a teacher. When we say Lord, we think of servants. When we th- when we say teacher, we think of students. Because the word disciple here is from Greek methetes, means uh, a student or a learner or a follower or a copier or a imitator. So here, Jesus is talking to his followers. He's talking to his servants. And what the servant does, he serves his Lord. What the follower does. He follow his teacher. He imitate his teacher. If we are his students, if we are his followers, who are we imitating? Afa peo ta to on kama kia onga. Afa peo ta to e fa kai kai ya teia ol fusili le so skerisi ano ta to G R C C this morning. O ai olo ta to fa ta ta iai. In everything, your speech, your lifestyle, your commitment to your Lord. Sadly many a times if someone go to Christian churches today who is not a Christian he can almost can't tell which one is Christian and which one is not a Christian if africa kala la langi if africa kala christian address alu na club la langi address alu loku ke siango ale ai mase se se what is going on If he is Lord, why don't we serve him as he want us? If he is a teacher, why don't we imitate him as we should? But Jesus said Matthew 11:29. Jesus told us to serve him. I mean to follow him. And in Romans 12:2, this is pastor Smain verse Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. Being a student of Christ, we we ought to be conformed to Jesus' ways, not the the pattern of this world. And when Jesus was on earth, he says, "Take my yoke on you and learn from me." It means copy from me, imitate me. Jesus didn't say imitate me in the way I do miracles. Jesus did not say imitate me in how I dress and how I speak and how I heal the sickness. He didn't say that. Jesus did not say to imitate him in those things. Why I say that because many people say I I've seen it on Facebook. One guy did you know how Jesus spit on the mud and mix and put on the face of this man? This guy did the same thing. You're not Jesus. We, we and Jesus did not tell us to imitate him like that. He says, 
He says, learn from me means follow me, imitate me, or follow me with this. What does it For he is gentle and humble in heart. So if Jesus is Lord, if Jesus is teacher, why don't we follow him? Why don't we do as he commands? Our calling is a calling into service. Now being a disciple and being a servant of Christ, we are calling into, vac- into service, not into a vacation. We are called to serve, not to reign. We will, we will reign, but later on, not, not this time. We are called to pick up a towel, not a title. This is the same spirit that was with Paul when, when, when the, the church at, at Corinth were Divided because of some people go to this, some people go to Paul, Jesus, and Peter. And Paul says, this is what you need to know. Regard us as this. Regard us as what? Regard us as slaves of Christ. Don't think of us as kings. Don't think of us as chiefs. Think of us as slaves of Christ. Not just polonga, polonga akerisso. Not polonga lolangi, polonga keriso. Polonga lolangi, faime lolangi, polonga keriso, e faime keriso. And we are Christ's slaves. Really, I didn't blame Peter with the way he react. But that's what happened. He did not understand what kind of ministry is this ministry. Imagine if every Christian and every leader in the Christian church have this mindset that we are slaves of Christ. A slave don't bother another slave. A slave cannot belittle another slave. A slave cannot look down on another slave. Why? Because we are all slaves. <laughs> so imagine if every Christian know that he and she is a slave of Christ. <laughs> but what Peter didn't understand, Jesus' ministry it's not about titles. It's about towers. It's not how people look up to us. It's about how we can go to serve others. It's about how low we can go to serve others. It's about how low we can go to serve God and serve Him through serving of His church, serving of His people. It's not about what people call us. It's how we ser- serve others in the lowest forms and in the lowest place. It's not about certain name or you get to sit in a certain places. You get to serve first when we have Kongai. Ministry is about serving people. It's not about titles. And as we do this church, as we serve God through this church, that should be our mindset. We are servants of Christ. We are not lords. We are not kings yet. We are servants. And the servants go and ask his master, what do you want me to do, O Lord? When these guys got converted through Paul's ministry, you'll find this in the book of Acts, the first thing they ask is, what shall we do? How long you've been a Christian? Have you ever asked that to God? God, what do you want me to do? <laughs> Another question is, what are you doing in the service of God? If you are service, what are you doing? You know what you're doing. As a service, as a servant of Christ.
verse 12, 13, and 14. Jesus says, If I'm your Lord and your teacher, and yet I am washing your feet, then you got to learn to wash each other's feet too. In other words, you got to learn to be a servant because in the kingdom of God, leaders are servants. Paul says, we cut us as servants, not king. Mele alai ona tutupu fevava inga tono o lotume kalesia. <laughs> this is why in some churches too much divisions too much fightings and I know you, you and I think you agree with me because you, you've seen some people fight in the church and you know why? too many lords no servants too many kings too many masters everyone is a master <laughs> No servant. There's no, I, I can't find in the Bible that says we are kings and we are masters. No, these are the words from the mouth of Christ. We are his servants. Many times Christians are forgetful of the truth that they are servants of Christ. They are disciples of Christ. A servant do what his Lord wants. A servant entertain his master by obeying his commandments. In this context, what is the will of the Lord? You'll find it in verse 30, in chapter 13, verse 34. And that is our second point. For this morning. It says. A, a new command. I give you. Love one another. A servant. Love another servant. With every. Being a Christian is being a servant of God. So this command is for the servants. It's for the Christians. It's for the believers of Christ. It says one believer Love another believer. It's a, a mutual thing. And you might say, what about if, if you were a lofa, that's not your thing. Your thing is to love another Christian. No attachment. You love another Christian. Doesn't matter what. You love another Christian. What about, they always talk about our family. Love each other. They always say, my wife is stupid, love each other. They always say their church is so much gossip and faikala, love each other. They always say, we are so unloving, love each other. It is a command. Do you know it is a command? This is the Lord of Lords. God became man and he gave us this order directly to us Christians. He says, love each other. If you love me, if you are my disciples, guess what? You ought to love each other. The world knows that you are my disciples if you love each other. We're talking about discipleship. We're talking about evangelism here. But later on you go and do that. Secondary, you go and tell others about Christ. First and foremost, we need to love each other. That is the most powerful evangelistic way. For the, the world know, people know, everyone know that you are of me. People will come, how come this guy is, is, is so loving, is so good, is so, you know, things going on, he's always have a smile on his face. He doesn't have a job, but he's always look all right. It doesn't so good looking, but you know, there's something in his smile. <laughs> but that is the difference. We are his disciples. And people will come, oh, I want to have a portion of that. I want to have people, the, the Bible says when we exalt Jesus, the world will what? The world will come. <laughs> That's God's method of evangelism. 
We love each other and people know that we are his disciples. We have lived Christ by loving each other and the world will come. And the funny thing is this, I want you to know this. To love is one thing. Notice what Jesus says. A new command, I give you, love one another. Well, if you finish there, it would be nice. Because it's, it's a little bit easier to love each other in any way we want to. But Jesus didn't stop there. He says, love one another and then as I have loved you. It's not easy to love as Jesus loved us. I tell you, it's not easy. It's not easy to love someone that you know he's been talking about you behind your back and now you found out and how you can tell me to love that person. <laughs> it's not easy. You cannot love. It's not natural for us to love like that. We can only do that love when we have the love of Christ in us. That's why Jesus says, love one another as I have loved you. No Christian in his own power will do that apart from the power of the Holy Spirit. Later on, Jesus says, I go and send another comforter who is the Holy Spirit. He will enable you to obey my commandments, including this commandment of loving one another. Love one another. And then he says, as I have loved you. You know why I know this hit the disciples so much? It's always Peter. It's always Peter. Simon Peter asked him, Lord, where are you going? Jesus was talking about loving one another and love as he had loved them. And Peter, instead of talking about this love, how can we love like that? He didn't ask that question. He says, where are you going? Peter was trying to change the subject. Why? Because naturally, Peter cannot love like that. And if you learn something from the life of Peter, this is the guy that walked on water. Lord, where are you going? If I were Jesus, I would say, Peter, don't worry about that. Don't talk about that yet. Talk about what I'm talking about. This is very vital in your Christian life. We're talking about how you love one another. And Peter changed the subject. So Jesus, go as he lead. Where I am going, you cannot follow now, but you will follow later. Peter, where I'm going... You cannot come now. And still, Peter did not stop there. He continued and says, Lord, why can't I follow you now? See, the pattern I'm observing here is when you're given something and you want another thing, it's not going to be good for you. And that's what Peter did to our Lord. For my Lord, why can't I follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. Then Jesus answered, Peter, you don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> what you ask for, you have no idea. Before the, the rooster crows, you're going to deny me not once, not twice, Peter, but thrice. You're going to deny me three times. And you can imagine all the power go out of Peter. <laughs> all the airs just finish. Kalas, kaput, saut. He wants to be bold for Christ. And many times, the way we act, the way we perform in the church, the way we speak, it almost reflects this kind of attitude. When, when Christ is Lord, make sure we are servants. When Christ is Lord, what I mean, make sure we are servants, make sure we respect and we submit His kindness. When ye say, do this, do this, do that, do that, 
when he say no means no. And here, when Christ wants to do this thing, and Peter say no. Come to here again. He questions again the leadership of Christ. Now, that is what about Peter. Let's look about what Christ says. We still here in our second point, love one another. And when Jesus says love one another, he says, as I have loved you, how Jesus loved us. Well, we all know the answer to that question. But I want you to answer me according to this context. Jesus being God, He is omniscient. He knows everything. And like I told you, because this is now in a um, chapter division, that's why the first, the 13th chapter seems so distant from the second and the chapter, I mean the 14th and the chapter after that and, and, and like that. But this is one story. After Jesus was prophesying, was predicting Peter's failure, he says, but do not let your hearts be troubled. Jesus knew that Peter's going to deny him. Jesus knew that Thomas is going to doubt him. Jesus knew that his disciples were trembling and running away scared when he had his trials. Jesus knew all those. But he says, do not let your hearts be troubled. You believe in God Believe also in me. My Father's house has many rooms. If that were not so, would I have told you that I am going there to prepare a place for you? Three times. Jesus knew. And guess what Jesus says here? In my father's house has many rooms. Jesus knew his disciples. Jesus knew his servants. Jesus knew that his disciples will fail. And yet, he says, it's almost like he says, my grace goes before you. My grace before you became my disciples. My grace was with you and I was here teaching you and all these things. My grace will continue to be with you till the end. According to that verse, that's why I wanted you to read that verse in the beginning. 13, 1. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. And that's the kind of love Jesus says, love one another as I have loved you. We ought to love one another as Jesus loved us. How? We love to each other till the end, unconditionally. Yet I told fell funny. A lot of fellas, you let's see, for a pay on a lot for my year so. Would you be able to do what Jesus did? He knew. He knew that Peter was going to deny him. He knew that. Thomas is going to doubt him. And he said, my father's house has many rooms. I'm going to prepare a room for you. Peter, you have a room there. Thomas, you have a room there. You, James and John, trying to play politics in my class, you also have room there. You have room there. Why? Because my father has a big house, big mansion, and every slave, every disciple have a room in there. But there is room. Think of your Lord. Think of your God like this. I'm not saying go and sin tomorrow. I'm not saying that. Because this is one of the heresies that now scattered in the church. They say, Christian, don't sin. I'm not saying, Christian, you should go and sin. No. Christians are supposed to live a holy life. And still, John says, if anyone seen, we have an advocate. We have our Lord Jesus Christ. I'm trying to say this according to the pattern that Jesus laid out here. Jesus knew that these disciples will deny him. Tell me a sin that is bigger than denying your Lord. You tell me. <laughs> And Jesus himself, before that, he says, 
You deny me before men, I will deny you before my father. And yet here, he predicts the three times denial of Peter, head boy of his school. He's going to deny his professor three times. Christ know, God know, God know your failures tomorrow. God know that you're going to deny him in one way or another tomorrow. And guess what? He says, my father, there is many rooms for each and every one of you. Though none of you will stand up for me, Jesus said, still a room for you. Church, there's room for people like you. And there's room for people like me. Okase alofa in a tele. Okase onosai. Okase fa pale pale in a mawai. Think of all that you have done. Think of all of our denials of Him in the way we live our lives. Think of the unforgiveness that we have practiced. Think of all the pride, things that we have said. And yet, God Himself, through His incarnated person, says, In my Father's house, there's still much room for each one and any one of you. On Friday night, I heard the youth, pastor was talking about salvation. And these two words were emphasis. The foreknew and predestined. That's why it saddened me when someone says, a Christian can lose his salvation. You have no idea how much, you have no idea how much you belittle the work God did. If someone asks me, do you believe that you, you can lose your salvation? This is what I'm going to tell you. It depends who saved me. If I was the one that saved me, it, I'm going to lose it. If God saved me, there's no way. And I heard some answers that night. One of the students says, we cannot lose our salvation. Why? And this, this was his answer. He says, because God doesn't make mistakes. And it's also contradict with this verse, the one that I started with, having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. It's almost like blasphemous against God to say that you can lose your salvation. It's another way of telling God, God, what you started, you cannot finish. I don't believe a Christian and then you're Christian today and non-Christian next year. There's nothing like that. The reason why you're not Christian next year, because you've never been a Christian this year. All those things that we celebrate and thank God for, for Him being a Lord in our lives. His grace goes before our failure. The command is love each other. That's why Jesus said, love each other as I have loved you. And he said, later on in the next chapter, he says, well, when I call, I will send another comforter. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. He enables us, he empowers us not to lord, not to rule, but to be a servant, to serve God. No one who is a Christian and doesn't love others because the Spirit enables us to love others with Jesus' love. So if Jesus is Lord, we are His servants. And because we are His servants, we ought to love one another as Jesus loves us. 
If he is our master, we are his imitators, and we ought to imitate our Lord. I would love to finish by reading this. In chapter 17, like I told you, this conversation is from 13 to chapter 17. I'm going to look at verse 6 through to 24. I have revealed you to those whom you gave me out of the world. They were yours. You gave them to me, and they have obeyed your word. Now they know that everything you have given me comes from you. For I gave them the words you gave me, and they accepted them. They knew with certainty that I came from you, and they believed that you sent me. I pray for them. I am not praying for the world, but for those who have given, you have given me, for they are yours. All I have is yours, and all you have is mine, and glory has come to me through them. I will remain in the world no longer, but they are still in the world. And I am coming to you, Holy Father. Protect them by the power of your name, the name you gave me, to that they may be one as we are one. While I was with them, I protected them and kept them safe by that name you gave me. None None has been lost except the one doomed to destruction so that scripture will be fulfilled. I am coming to you, but I say these things while I am still in the world so that they may have the full measure of my joy within them. I have given them your word and the world has hated them for they are not of the world anymore than I am of the world. My prayer is not that you take them out of the world, but that you protect them from the evil one. They are not of the world, even as I am not of it. Sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. As you send me into the world, I have sent them into the world. For them I sanctify myself, that they too may be truly sanctified. My prayer is not for them alone. I pray also for those who will believe in me, through their message, that all of them may be one. Father, just as you are in me and I am in you, may they also be in us so that the world may believe that you have sent me. I have given them the glory that you gave me, that they may be one as we are one. I in them and you in me, so that they may be brought to complete unity. Then the world will know that you sent me and I have loved them even as you have loved me. Father, I want those you have given me to be with me where I am, to see my glory, the glory you have given me because you loved me before the creation of the world. This is the prayer of our Lord. What a Lord, this Lord. May this Lord be Lord in our lives. And this is His command. Before you do my ministry, one thing I want you to do. Know everything in the Word of God. This command always precedes commission. Always precedes evangelism. What is it? Love one another. Before you teach the word, before you preach the word, before you go out and witness to the lost, this is what I want you, Jesus say, love one another. How can you preach when you don't love people that you preach to? How can you teach when you don't love people that you teach? How can you go and save a soul when you have no love for them? We love because he first loved us. May he continues to be Lord in our lives, and in our church. In Jesus' name, Amen. Yo valo mato li imato fa manu ina ma fa afta yelo walofa sil sil eselo mato ngofi ma ofo mato loto le tele na uwalo walofa fa ma oni oye elele oye e alofa oye ya imato ta ma o mato loa ma ta utino lo mato le ato otoa o mato ta utino lo mato 
lele lele tele temi o luma tele temi matu te fa fiti ai lowa le itanga yesu many times we deny your lordship over our lives by the way we live our lives oh god but we thank you for you know us oh lord e loa o e masilafia o mato malo si anga ma vai vai nga e te fa pale pale le tua e te fa manga lo mai le li ina i o mato i lo mato le anga Matau fetuliatu ia te oe maulau fa amanga longa. Ta maale nei tae au matau te vi iam faftaia oe ia ua fionga matau te vala au. Fo ia te oe ta maa fa amole mole fa amanga lo mai i matau. Tele taimi wale atangi ai o oe o le li i o matau o langa. Tele taimi wale atangi ai o oe o le faia onga i o matau o langa. Tele taimi o matou le usta i ai lau polo a inga tu sa o mai mo i matou o lo matou a lo lofa lea o le tasi ile isi. Ta maa wa fai longa e matou te a lo lofa ai. A e le o lo lea fina nga lo mo i matou. Ta mai o e matou te a lo lofa fa apei o na e a lofa mai e su. Ta maa o le matou te talo. Fai a le nei e ka le sia. Fai a i matou te te o tasi o ni tangata e a lo lofa. I ou tangata. I au fa nau kerisiano fa apei o na ea lo fa mai e su. Fo ile vi inga i lo su a fa lo ma to o tua. Bana tua fo isi o stasif o le a fa pena o na maua va noa. Ma to te fa alongo fa atasia i au a fionga pe o na mana vaina. Le a lii i a iai lo mana lilo. I a iai lau fa ama lo singa. I a iai le ngalu e ngalo a nganga fa ia i loto ma nganga i felu ia ina. Fa ima fa amana tunga i a i ma to o. O oe o lea lii o mato o langa lea tua. E matawha i oi ma le tiute o eva la au ina ai mato. E fa penao na o mato o faia ma le ava ma le mi ngao i a te oe. E na iwi i a ai lo suafa. E fa avavau, fa avavau lava. Amene.